a lot of people would disagree with me uh, on saying this but in my opinion it is probably that has not and probably might not be a better time to be in academia than it is right now For the past year at Inside IIM, we have been conducting one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions as counsel, short domain-specific courses as master classes, and university-affiliated certificate programs. Now we are extremely excited to announce that we have a new home for all these highly rated programs in altuni.in. So if you are looking to earn a high salary, get a promotion, switch jobs, click on the link in the description or just visit altuni.in. Thank you. Enjoy the video and. Don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Cheers. My name is Uttam. Uh, I am a second year master student at uh, Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. I uh, have done my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from a private college in Bangalore. Uh, it goes by the name of uh, BMS College of Engineering from 2013 to 2017. I really enjoyed my academic uh, course of uh, Four years, three years of mechanical, and the first year is usually generally all disciplines. You just do a course on all disciplines. I'm sure a lot of people would be uh, would have heard or you would have mm, received advice that do an internship in your engineering or probably take up a research position or anything like that in your second or third year. And to be honest, I in fact I tried quite a bit uh, after first year, after second year, and after third year. So I applied to a bunch of places for summer research fellowship, this internship, that internship, and I sent out at least 200 to 300 applications, but really did not receive any uh, sort of response. And uh, this also sort of got me thinking. And in hindsight, this is something that I would advise people is that the two and a half to three months that you get in between uh, your first and your second year or between uh, semesters, a uh, semester break that you get, in my opinion, is too short a period, in hindsight, I feel, is too short a period to do an internship. I feel that even if I had got an internship uh, in these two months, I would not have had the learning outcome that I would have expected. So I feel I did not lose out on much, but of course, a lot of people will disagree with me, but this is what I feel. Instead, I decided to do something that was more... That was something which I wouldn't get out of a conventional internship, out of a conventional technical internship. So I took up, uh, I did a lot of volunteering activities. So I would say that if you do not get your internships or if you're not able to secure a position, it is absolutely all right. And you will not be losing out on as much as you thought that you would. It so happened that that particular year, usually PSUs or public sector undertakings uh, do not go out for campus plates, placements in private colleges. Uh, at least most private colleges don't host them unless they're a really big name. It's usually government colleges that um, have these uh, as placement. But that particular year, uh, we had Bharat Electronics Limited. Uh, it's one of uh, India's uh, defense electronic manufacturing, the best defense electronic manufacturing firm. Uh, <clears throat> not to be confused with BHEL. <laughs> so Bharat Electronics Limited um, were coming to my college for campus placement. It was paying well, of course, they say like Sarkari Nagri. So it was paying really well. And I was like, okay, let's maybe give it a shot. And I wrote the gave the written exam. It was about 150 people who gave the written exam and about six of them got selected. So I think it was, uh, it was a pretty difficult written exam. And for a change, I did prepare for it. Because I was like, okay, let me just go wing the other written exams. And pro tip, in hindsight, please study for your placements. Uh, don't neglect it. That's something which I did, which was in, I mean, more of that later. But uh, I prepared for BEL and I gave the written exam. I cleared it. And then I went to the interview. And the interview was a great uh, experience because the interviewer uh, was... Uh, had worked in ISRO for about 10 years. And when he asked me about the project, so my project was uh, 
thrust vectoring, which was uh, a sort of more of like a space uh, related propulsion related concept. And he got really interested and we spoke about it for almost half an hour and it was really nice. So yeah, I mean, you never know what will come in handy where. So just try to absorb as much information as you can in your four years. So that is another uh, sort of tip. Thinking back, I think the one of the best decisions that I made, apart from like, of course, picking engineering, which I don't regret at all. One of the best decisions that I made was to sit for that BEL placement. And believe me, you don't know how life can surprise you because a lot of people told me, ah, Sarkar, you know, blah, blah, blah. Life to set, but you'll, you'll just sort of rot away, not do anything. Not at all. I started <clears throat> on my first day. Believe it or not, I went to work at 7.30 a.m. I got home at 10 p.m. This was my first day of a government job, of a government job. So please don't, please bust those myths about government jobs. Things do happen there. And yeah, just, just be proud of it is, is, is all I have to say. It was almost like a startup working for two years. But I also realized that in the long term, this is not something that I would be able to do because I felt that, you know, although this is a great venture to, you know, see how it is. Uh, to sort of get an idea of what manufacturing is, of what working in an industry is, I sort of realized that this is not my sort of long-term goal. And the interest in aerospace because of the two years project that we did in college really kept coming back to me. And that's when I decided that, okay, I think I should really uh, opt for a career in um, aerospace, sort of shift careers. And I was also told by a lot of people that shifting careers earlier on uh, in your life is a lot easier than when you are say 30, 35. So I thought, okay, I have the time now. So it's probably a great uh, time to shift to aerospace. Uh, I was looking up on universities and of course, US first thing that comes to anyone's mind, I did look up on US, but uh, I'm, I don't know if most of you are aware, but there are a lot of security uh, clearances that are required to work in aerospace companies in US. In fact, it's there all over the world, but more so in US. Uh, it's called ITAR, um, which you can definitely find a lot about on the internet. Where to look next? So looked at Australia, looked at Singapore, and of course looked at Europe. But in Europe, um, in Germany, most of the courses were free, of course, but they were offered in German. And English courses for aerospace was very few. Because I worked for a couple of years, I sort of realized that I would want a course which stresses on research as much as it does on industrial exposure. In other words, I wanted a course which had a mandatory internship because I realized that if the internship was not mandatory, I'm not going to look for it because you don't have the motivation to sort of look for an internship in a foreign country if everything is going well, you're enjoying, you're traveling, Europe, great. So I found this course in TU Delft, Aerospace Masters in Aerospace Engineering, which had a mandatory internship. The application process started in the month of October. Uh, the deadline was January 15th uh, for the fall uh, admission, which is September 1st. I did take some help from uh, an admission agency, but that was only for the U.S. universities. So I, you get a list, you need to provide them with a list of uh, universities that you would like to go to, and they would sort of help you in the process, like, you know, tell you, okay, this has to be done next, this has to be done next, and so on. They also helped with the SOP, which of course I wrote and they had to edit it and modified. But then TU Delft was one, the only university, in fact, for which I did not take their help with SOP. I decided, okay, this is something that I'm serious uh, and I would like to write this on my own. And believe me, uh, biggest advice, do not take the help of uh, admission agencies because uh, I think admission is something that's a very personal process and you do not want to involve many people. Great grades followed by a good GRE score, which I would say about 320 um, or so, average GRE score, and well written, clear, and concise and motivated statement of purpose or SOP goes a long, long way. I uh, took a lot of time to write my SOP. It took about a month uh, for Delft, and I feel that really made all the difference. So that's a big myth buster uh, that. Grades are not important. Grades are very much important. And yeah, 
I started early, which was really helpful. I started in August so that I could submit by October. So when the applications opened in October on October 15th, I submitted on October 15th, in fact. So I'm sure they must have, the admissions committee must have felt, oh, okay, <laughs> we just opened it and we got an application today. So it's really important to sort of send in your applications early. Um, it, it really makes a difference. So that is another important thing that I would keep in mind. So mine was funded through an education loan. And um, biggest advice is that do your, do your cost analysis before you go. Uh, keep rough figures in mind. Like I was looking up on the median salaries for aerospace graduates in Europe and sort of compared it with uh, the repayment period. What is the interest? How long I would take to repay? And did a bit of a little bit of very simple basic math. So if you have anywhere between three to five years uh, of repayment period, I would say that is very, very favorable. Anything more than five is not so good. And also considering that I worked for two years and I was well, 24 when I left as against 21, in, in fact, 22, and most people leave. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be repaying loans into my 30s. So that was something that I also had in mind. So do this calculation of how much it would uh, cost to sort of repay your loans, which is a very, very important thing. If you're taking an education loan, God forbid, you should not, I mean, scholarship is the most ideal situation. So that is an important uh, thing to keep in mind because cost is of course a major major player i don't know if uh, many people know this but in <clears throat> the rather in tu delft i don't know if it's the same in other universities they follow a quarterly system they don't follow a semester system like the united states where they have uh, i think two major portions in a year in the netherlands they have four major portions in a year which means each quarter has seven weeks of course coursework and you have like four to five subjects in seven weeks, master level subjects. And yeah, and then you finish it, you don't get a break, you go on to the next one. So it was really, really, really intense. The first one year was I think the most intense uh, study that I have ever done. We Because we have a mandatory internship in second year, we had to start looking for internships, which was very, pretty difficult to find. And I had a bunch of interviews and I interviewed with uh, Dassault. People who are in tech would have heard of Dassault, Dassault Systems, uh, Katia, Solidworks, uh, all these products. They are, they, are the, they are the creators and owners of these products. A lot of concern that students and parents alike have before sending uh, their student, uh, children abroad is the job prospects. So in India, we are sort of conditioned to thinking that so finally on my placements hoga, you sit for placements and you can get a job. But the way things work outside of India is a little different and that can be intimidating for sure. And I, as you rightly said, nobody uh, can give an idea of how things are going to be in terms of the job situation uh, after you graduate. But um, in terms of aerospace and in Europe, I feel that mm, there is a lot of opportunities right now and the advantage of being in Europe is because since Europe is so big and has so many countries uh, they are very used to having people who are not from the same country coming and working for them so broadly speaking in terms of the job market it is not as bad as people might think because of the pandemic specifically or because of the fact that you are an international student a lot of people disagree with me uh, on saying this, but in my opinion, it is probably that has not and probably might not be a better time to be in academia than it is right now. Because in during the pandemic, uh, a lot of advantages of being in the academia. One is that you don't have to worry about finding a job because you are studying. So you have something to do at least for two years. And I'm sure and I hope that the pandemic does not go on for the next two years, you have something to do. So that is the first thing. Secondly, I agree that the cost incurred is high and maybe the returns is not justifiable for the amount of cost that is incurred. But I would say that <clears throat> picking up the knowledge right now would be, <clears throat> you will be valued more as a person with a master's degree 
in two years when the pandemic effects are sort of gone and industries are opening up rather than someone who has been unemployed or has been doing disconnected things for two years.